as opposed to using the master book, because it's a bit too simple. We'll keep a... Uh... <gasps> SCORE! Caught the ho ho! <laughs>
us already having faced someone with a level 35 in Jasmine Steelix. I feel like it would be good to, you know, have a bit higher level Pokemon. Pokemon in this game, in Gen 2, are just ridiculously low. Also, there's something about this grass right in the middle of this pond. There's sort of a pond with some water, and then there's some grass in the middle. There's something that's either Licky Tongue or Tangela related. It's either, you can find either Licky Tongue or Tangela in that grass, maybe both, I'll check in a second. Or this is where I realized in Heart Girl Soul Silver how they could evolve. Because in Generation 4, as in most generations, new generations, a new way to evolve was introduced in Generation 4, was introduced, you needed to know a specific move to be able to evolve. And Licky Tongue and Tangela both have evolutions that work that way. Licky Tongue, I think, needs rollout, and Tangela needs to know ancient power. Let's see if you can randomly find one. One of those. Yeah, it's a Weeping Bell. I quite, I quite like Weeping Bell. It's, it's a fun Pokemon. Alright, Licky Tongue and Tangela are here, actually. Although. Yeah, Licky Tongue isn't here at night in Crystal, it's just... But yeah, it, it, Licky Tongue and Tyler can both be found here if uh, I would want to catch them. I just checked. It's Poliwag, Poliwhirl, but only in Crystal. Then it's Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, Licky Tongue, and Tangela. Hello. I fish until I can't anymore. I also battle until I drop. That is my relationship with my Pokemon. Sounds good, let's battle. Oh yeah, something that um, I haven't mentioned for a while, I don't need to, but I feel like I want to bring it up now. You know of five of my main team members, I have Proton the Ampharos, I have Breeze the Jump Bluff, I have my Togetic, my Heracross, and my Lapras. But, yes? But, Eevee, the thing is with Eevee, it's not part of my main team, I want to keep training it, I want to evolve, well not really train it, I want to have it gain friendship levels, I want it to be, uh, eventually evolve because that requires friendship. However, it's not part of my main team, I've still only revealed five of my main team members. So what do you think the final team member will be? I have yet to obtain it. I have been unable to obtain it so far. So let me know in the comments in the Twitch chat what do you think it is. We got a phone call from Jack. Ooh, he wants to battle. We'll have to go to National Park uh, in a little bit. A f I want to clear out the trainers on this route first, then we'll go and fight him. There's just three more to go. This girl, one more guy, and then a bird keeper. Then we'll go fight Jack. Starting for Solar Beam. We'll never get to use Solar Beam. Goodbye. Critical hit as well.
bomb again? That was quick. Wasn't it a few trainers ago, like three, four trainers ago that she called us? She's finding us a lot of items. Laps will be a major to fight Claire if you know. Yeah, especially if it reaches level 36. I checked when it, because when I dropped my Croconaut to get uh, to add Lapras to the team, I lost my ice coverage because uh, Croconaut had ice punch. I checked when it learns ice beam. That's level 36, and I think that it'll just about reach level 36 when we get to that gym. In a way, I was hoping it wouldn't. I was already th thought it was well into the 40s that learned Ice Beam, but I kind of want to add to the challenge of the Dragon Gym, <clears throat> which is a hard gym by itself. It's pretty high levels, hard to hit them super effectively, especially Kingdra, because Kingdra isn't even hit by hit super effectively by Ice. Um, I'll go through that challenge without an Ice move. I'll probably have Ice Beam by that point, and I expect to do the route south of Blackthorn City, where the 8th Gym is... Um, before I do the gym anyway. So I'll probably have Ice Beam. Um, but I'll still try and mix up who I use throughout the gym. I guess if there's Dratini, maybe one Dragonair somewhere. I think there's Horsey and Cedar in the gym too. For those, I guess I can just use Thunderbolt. And back up here is the guy that we've already f uh, faced. No. Here's a bird keeper. I think he talks about the legendary bird from Kanto. Articuno Zapdos Moltres. The legendary bird Pokemon! Here you go! I remembered. Ah, I should've used Thunderbolt. I, I was just thinking, oh, Ice Beam could be super effective here, but I don't have Ice Beam, so I just use, should just use Surf. But well, Lapras can learn uh, Thunderbolt. Maybe he's talking about Ho and Lugia. Could be, yes. I think they're not. Like, Ho, oh, I guess can be a bird. Lugia's, I guess, sort of a bird. I'd consider the trio more birds. But Lugia could be considered a bird. It's a flying type. Then, but not every flying type is a bird. Like Butterfree or Gyarados. They're not birds. Aerodactyl. Can Aerodactyl be considered a bird? It flies. It has wings. But is that a bird? Let's see what he says. Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres are the three legendary bird Pokemon. Heard there are the legendary birds, though. Um, sure. I'll add you. Maybe, maybe he says something interesting about the legendary birds. I don't actually remember. Alright, we have a rematch scheduled with Jack, so I'm going to go see my friend Jack. La la. This is a bit of a risk of an encounter. We didn't get one, so this is the shortest route. International Park. We recalled that pincer earlier today. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the same stream as when I did the bug catching contest and got third place with a pincer at full health. Yeah, definitely watch uh, once I'm done with this walkthrough, which is still a while away, and I get around to doing the bonus episode for the bug catching contest. Yeah, uh, that should be able to explain how this can happen. Maybe I can look at the minimum and maximum points that every species of Pokemon can give you. And I'm not even 100% sure at the moment if the Pokemon that the other participants use, or catch, or end up with, are random, or if, or if they're set per person. British sure Cool Trader Nick, or something, who we actually found in Union Cave's basement near Lapras, he is always one of the highest high scorers. Well, he's definitely trained. I was a Gloomer 28, Electric 31. Youngster Joey had definitely trained when we faced him at the start of the stream. He had a level 21 Raticate. The thing is, Youngster Joey still hasn't said his line. He, Youngster Joey is famous for one thing and one thing only. 
Not that he's the first one, the first trainer in the entire Pokemon series whose phone number you can get. That's also a thing, but that's not what he's famous for at all. But the thing that he's famous for at all, which is the main reason why I've added him in my phone, is for him to say the line, but he still hasn't said the line. So every time he calls me, I'm like, oh, are you going to say the line? He still hasn't said it. Okay, back to Mahogany. Back to, uh, was it Bird Keeper Vance? Right behind him was a cave. We are going to enter that cave. And have some fun with that. Uh, the top percentage of Radata. That is what he is talking about. Did you hear about my super cool Rattata? It's like, it's in the top percentage of Radata. I was asking, but as, uh, Gen 2 is indeed the first gen with shiny Pokemon, yes. Gen 1 didn't have shinies. Technically, the data for shinies existed then, but that's because they used pretty much the same data as in Gen 2, and Gen 2 just gave a certain portion of a Pokemon's data the possibility to make a shiny. It just didn't exist in Gen 1. Poke Every Pokemon has a bunch of numbers, random numbers associated with it, that mean nothing. So that, in the future, if something new is introduced, that that relates to a randomness per Pokemon, then that can be added to it, such as shinies here. The personality value of a Pokemon is important for Wormpool's evolution. Uh, so there's a few numbers that became a personality value, uh, which decides if it evolves to Silcoon or Cascoon, which is which can be known if you can access the hidden hidden numbers, hidden stats of a Pokemon through some kind of outside program. You can know for a Wormpool what it'll evolve into. It'll, what it'll evolve into before it evolves. We are about to enter Ice Path. So guess what types of Pokemon we can find here. 